couple weeks ago I talked about how there was a Witcher 3 mod in development. Well today I decided I would just come in here and give it a little gander for you guys just so that we can see what we got going on here. Uh, this, keep in mind again that this has been it's still an active development as far as I know, but it hasn't been updated since about November of 2023. So this is a pretty old update at this point. I think that's like right after Legacy of Persia. I bought one DLC behind, probably going to be a little while before it's upgraded, but that's okay. So we have this first of all. all right, this is probably going to be a lot like the, uh, the Ambinar video I did. Very informal, not a lot like my other videos. It's mostly just me trying, coming in here and just checking things out, right? First of all, we have this gorgeously illustrated map. I really wanted to draw attention to this because I love this, and I think that once they get the full table map, this is going to lend itself to that really well. They could definitely do more Polish-inspired folk art elements. That would be really cool. I don't know how much bigger you would make the map, considering this is basically the map that you get in The Witcher. So I, I suppose filling the world with cool stuff will be the first goal. But let's see what we got up here in uh, the Antebellum. So the north stands before a precipice. Though centuries of conquest have built strong kingdoms, their rulers waste blood and treasure over border posts and trifling sites. The Elder Folk, Elves, Dwarves, and their like assimilate to the filth and lucre of human cities or cling to the last remnants of their ancient claims. Yet the rage of the Elder Folk is all but boiling over, with some hearkening back to the old wars for freedom from human oppression. Monsters lurk in forgotten lairs, cold in witchers' hunts, but never so few as humans would believe. Meanwhile, beyond the Amel Mountains, one kingdom after another falls beneath the banners of the great son of Nilfgaard and her inexorable Imperator. Will the North unite before crisis strikes? So for context, this takes place during the Witcher books, just in case you were curious as to what time in the lore that we are, because you guys know I love lore. So basically this, this takes place during the Sword of Destiny, I believe specifically that story, the Sword of Destiny story, not the Sword of Destiny book, which is a collection, the second collection of short stories before the books. So basically this is Ciri's aunt who is still alive, which is really cool. Um, I think it's her aunt, or it's her mom, I can't recall. Uh, yeah, and actually if we click her, yeah, you can see Cir Cirilla right here. So we do have Siri. I, I want to say... Actually, you know what? I think she might be her grandmother. It's been a while since I've read it, but I think it's actually... This is her grandmother, and she took care of her in her daughter's stead because her daughter died, maybe? Giving birth to her, something like that? Anyway, Kalantha's dope. She's a really, really cool character. This is probably who I would try to play as because in, in lore, her kingdom gets absolutely yeeted. So if she could somehow survive that, that would be cool. Full test, for those of you who don't remember, he's the one who gets assassinated in The Witcher 2 at the beginning of the game. And then we have Vizimir the Just, and this is his son Radovid. I'm sure many of you who have played The Witcher 3 know who Radovid is. He is a bit of a dick, but that's him right there. And then we have this Maeve, the Merry Widow. So Nilfgaard would be, I believe, somewhere up here, so they haven't quite come down yet. And then we also have Skellige, which, of course, great place. Okay, so big thing automatically that I'm noticing is that the map does feel small. Like, it's... I, I think that it could probably benefit from... Um, and again, this isn't going to be me complaining. I just, I'm just merely pointing things out as I'm seeing them. I think this could be bent, like improved, maybe, by just increasing the map size. Not necessarily this specifically, but just like stretch the map to make it bigger. Uh, it, you could even have more blank space around the edges and that might make it a little bit better. Because even zooming in here, this this isn't a lot. And normally people, at least I do, I play like it this far and I'm already seeing the edge of the map. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. I do like that the map is small because I think it's cool. But some people are definitely going to have a problem with it. I'm going to click on Sintra. So I, I jump back here. Uh, we're going to click on Kalanth, the Lioness. So for all her brilliance at court and on the battlefield, the Lioness of Sintra lives a cursed life. Rogner, her late husband, bound her daughter and sole heir to a monster's whims. Though the cunning queen thought the problem solved thanks to a certain witcher, i.e. Geralt, destiny was not done. Soon enough, Kalanth's daughter was gone and her granddaughter was promised to the unholy witcher. Now a black storm gathers beyond the Marnadal stairs, threatening all Kalanth holds dear. Can Kalanth defeat destiny and an empire? No. It looks like they do get an option here. We get the option to found Magna Sintra, which is basically a... looks like a kingdom? Like a king... like maybe an empire title? I think she's already a queen, so I would assume... Yeah, and then you have the Northern Realms here, which is, of course, something else entirely. And from what I can tell, I don't know if Nilfgaard is going to get added. I would assume so, which would, would require them to expand the map, because I believe Nilfgaard is somewhere up here. That or you could do a cool thing where they're an invading force, and you could maybe join them, sort of like what they do in Agot, where you like join them, and then you get to play as them that way. That could be really cool. So as you can see, we have Ciri here. Uh, where is she? So we have Siri. She has athletic, pretty, uh, and robust. And I don't know if she has 
Okay, so she ha we, they do have Mouse Sack in the game, and she does have a crush on Worm Mouth, which is funny. So here's Mouse Sack, very important character to the story as well. He's like an herbalist in Skellige. He's friends of Siri. I don't think any of the Witchers are in the game, but we can look. We can certainly find out. Um, we'll just do All Realms, and then we'll do... Let's just do Prowess, just to see. So we got this guy. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any of the Witchers, which is an interesting choice. I mean, even if they were just like you know, like default characters. We do have Sigismund, which is cool. Sigismund Dijkstra, in case you needed me to tell you who I'm talking about. This guy's a spy, and that's why he's got such an elusive shadow. He actually has crazy stats. This would be a great person. I mean, honestly, playing as Redania, I'm not a fan of Redania, but playing as them seems like they'd be, uh, they'd be pretty well off. He also has pretty solid prowess, but yeah, there's not really, there's no Witchers yet in the mod, which is fine. I mean, you know, we're, we're again, we're just doing a little overview here. We're just checking things out. But I'm kind of curious to see it. What are the borders of this Magna Sintra? Oh, it's pretty large, actually. But that doesn't look very difficult at all. Like, they're all... Actually, they all have really big armies. My god. I was not expecting them to be so large. So she gets... Oh, they do have a couple custom men at arms. Let's check those out. Um, they have Lion's Mane Stalwarts, which has a unique little logo here. Same as the, uh, you know, the, the Men-at-Arms, the, the Knights, like the, the Ground Knights, basically. But it still does look cool. Maybe a little flavor text on there and you'd be solid. They have trebuchets. Let's see what else we got. It looks like those are their unique ones. I am kind of curious now to check out some of the other guys. Let's see here. So they get Dwarf Ballistas, but it doesn't have a unique picture yet, but that is really awesome. And they get, oh, they get the Tredegorian Cavaliers, which is cool. Yeah, they have some pretty sweet knights. And then, I don't know, well, I wonder what Skellige's got. Let's check them out. They have Drakkar Corsairs, and they have Almhut Greatswords. My mouth just decided to fall apart there when I tried to talk. But that's that's actually awesome. I wonder if they get to raid over here in Skellige. I don't believe that's really part of their lore, from what I remember, but it would be cool. Let's see if we get any interesting lifestyles. Everything's basically the same. Everything looks more or less the same. Um, I'm going to jump over to Redania just to see what they got going on up here. And found Radovid's Realm, which is interesting. Radovid the Great, which is not him. I believe Radovid... Oh, right. Found Radovid's Realm. Okay, yeah. Because we're in House Radovid. This is Radovid Radovid of Redania. <laughs> I forgot his name is Radovid Radovid, which is such a strange name. Um, anyway... Oh, he does have a unique item. He's got this orb. The Orb of Tretagor. Crafted of silver and gold, this relic of Redania's early history harkens back to the first hopeful trade among men and elves. Um, then the Ainsiths would still offer things precious beyond measure to the desperate, blundering exiles, sure that the humans would understand their superior ways. This gift to Sambuk was one of those precious things, but no history claims the elves' generosity stemmed the onslaught of the first Redanian. So yeah, these guys were like, and still are, pretty, pretty nasty to uh, elves and other and other folk like that so not not really surprising um, that people don't like them the merry widow i'm wondering are there any elves or anything in the game i don't see any of those either so it looks to be like it's just humans for now which is again fine um, quite a few counties that you could try out though which is neat king foltest the absolute chad let's switch over to him obviously everybody prefers Tamiria to uh, Redania, or you should. You can found Greater Tamiria, that's one of his things. Let's see if he's got anything in his inventory. He has Desmond's Crown. When Desmond built his castle on the shores of Lake Vizima, there were no great goldsmiths among his subjects, no silversmiths to call upon in the monster-infested swamps. Yet the first king of Tamiria made do. With time, the wealth and power of Tamiria grew beyond measure. Desmond's poor old crown was remade time and time again in precious metals and rare stones. Whether there is a trace of the original left in this proud ornament is a matter of academic debate. So it's sort of like the Theseian crown, as it were. Pretty cool. Let's see where it has our... So we are capital in Vizima, which makes sense. And I believe up here in Redania, they are in Atretigor. Although, yeah, Novigrad is actually an independent realm, which is cool. So they are... Which I also think is accurate. Like, I think that's lore accurate that they're sort of like their own trade thing. I wonder if they get any options. Let's jump over to them. Oh, you can't. Okay, so they're a theocracy. Okay, yeah, so you can't play as them. I'm just going to jump over to Skellige and see what sort of stuff they get. So they get to found the um, Conundrum of the Great Sea, which I believe they probably already have this, don't they? Oh, no, you have to have control of these two as well. 
Interesting. Interesting. So just like a minor decision there. Oh, they have Ingvar's Bane, which that sword actually looks really sick. No, long ago, no man dared set foot upon Ang Skellig for fear of Ingvar, a great and cruel bear. Tyr, son to Heimdall and Hulin, set out to fell the beast and claim the island for his birthright. He bore this sword, forged in the black depths of Skellige, and enchanted with uncanny runes by Hulin's crafts. The blade struck true, slaying Ingvar and proving Tyr's claim to on Skellige, where his children and his children's children would one day be called... Tuersesh. Tuersesh? Tuersesh? I don't know how you say that. I think that's how... This is a cool looking sword model, honestly. I know it's just like the uh, the Norse sword, but in gold. I wonder if there's a model for it. Let's find out. Uh, no. No unique model yet. That's okay. It is still... I mean, it's a nice looking sword, though. So let's see. All right, so there you go. I mean... Again, I just, I didn't really have like a big plan for this one. We can we can jump in here and try and like give things a shot, but oh yeah, there's her mom, Pavetta, and there's Dooney. Yeah, he's like a werewolf, literally. Yeah, he's like a werewolf, and yeah, her mother. She died. She disappeared. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. She, they they did make her look really pretty, and that's kind of how I would imagine like Siri would look. So I think that that's really solid. Um, if if you're familiar with the show, this takes place pretty. I mean, pretty much in parallel with it, right? The show is supposed to be the first couple books, um, the poorly done, but that's neither here nor there. So if you're familiar with the show a little bit, then you probably are familiar with the story that would be centered around this time period. Maybe after, or like towards the end of the first season from what I remember. So they have, oh, they also get Huskarls who are, oh, that's nice. It's kind of surprising they don't just start with Huskarls anyway, but it's cool that they get an additional one on top of that. Oh, uh, Vengerberg Maulers. Oh, yeah, so here's Vengerberg, like where Yennefer would be from. She'd be like over in this region. Lyrian, yep. Arbalists. Amish Huntsmen. Oh, I didn't know the Amish. <laughs> Amish, I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> the Amish Huntsmen of the Witcher realm. You know, the, the, the Witcher's Amish. But yeah, I think that's that's going to be it for this look. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys like a general overview of what you could do if you did decide to try them on. You can easily download it on Steam. I'll put a link in the description. It is there. It is ready for you if you so wish. Um, personally, I would probably give it a little more time. Join them on the Discord if you have the means. Help them out too so that we can all have the model a little bit sooner. And, uh, you know, it's always nicer to have more hands on deck, especially if you have the experience, but don't go bothering them because that would be annoying too. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been just a short little look at the Witcher Realms mod. I'm Soul, and I will happily see you in the next one.